Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, September 6th, 2020, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 16, verses 13 through 24. Brethren, be watchful. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Now, brethren, you know that the household of Stephanus were the first converts in Achaia, and they have devoted themselves to the service of the saints. I urge you to be subject to such men and to every fellow worker and laborer. I rejoice at the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaeus, because they have made up for your absence, for they have refreshed my spirit as well as yours. Give recognition to such men. The churches of Asia send greetings. Aquila and Prisca, together with the church in their house, send you hearty greetings in the Lord. All the brethren send greetings. Greet one another with a holy kiss. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. If anyone has no love for the Lord, let him be accursed. O Lord, come. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 through 42. The Lord said this parable. There was a householder who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower over, and built a tower, and let it out to tenants and went into another country. When the season of fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Afterward he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and cast him out of the vineyard, and they killed him. When therefore the owner of this vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death, and let out the vineyard to other tenants, who will give them the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. I'm going to diverge a little bit from my normal practice, and instead of discussing what's in the readings, you can take a look at yesterday's Divine Liturgy and today's Divine Liturgy, and you can hear sermons on um, this topic on both days. But I want to talk about something else. I've heard numerous people say recently, why did God let X happen? Or why did God let Y happen? Or why is God allowing the COVID virus? Or why is God allowing my daughter to have all the problems that she's having? Or why does God allow cancer in children or any of those kinds of things? And with all due respect, I have to say, I don't think that that's a very nice question to ask. And I'll explain why. We are Orthodox Christians. As part of the Antiochian Orthodox Church, we recognize a certain basic set of understandings that help to govern and guide us in what we do. The first is, of course, we believe that Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. That troparia that we sing every Pascha is a true reminder of who Jesus Christ is and everything that he went through so that we could have the hope of eternal life and not death at the end of our existence here on earth. But there's another thing too, and that is this whole issue of how much are we in control and how much is God in control. Now, it is true, it says in the epistle to the Hebrews, that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That means he knows the hour of my death. That means that he knows every hair on my head. He knows my intentions. He knows my deepest, darkest thoughts. He knows all of those things. Fine. But that does not mean that he controls them. I control them. God has a will for me. God has a, a 
design on something that he would hope that I would follow, but I am entirely free to either choose to follow it or not to follow it. And this is the thing that concerns me the most. We're human beings. God made us strong, intelligent, capable of making decisions, and, oh, by the way, capable of fulfilling our own will. And this is where things get difficult. We are humans of a great capacity to be able to do whatever it is that we choose to do. If we want to go to, moon, to the moon, we will go to the moon. If we want to send astronauts to Mars, we'll send astronauts to Mars. If we want to send people to the furthest depths of the seas, we can do that too. If we want to develop the ability to be able to walk into a volcano, within a number of decades, I'm sure that very goal could be accomplished. I don't know why, but it could be. We are creatures of free will, which means that we can choose things that are good for us, and we can also choose things that are very, very bad for us. That's not God's fault. And that is not God that is saying, I'm going to do this to this person. I'm going to inflict them with cancer. I'm going to make them an addict. I'm going to inflict this virus on everybody. We live in a world that is full of created things. And you can choose to see God, or you can choose not to see God. And when you choose not to see God, then you tend to do things that serve either yourself or your own special interests. And what happens? Those who are not within the sphere of your special interests, or those who are not directly affected by your decisions to affect only your family, they can suffer. And that's sad. And that can be fixed. But it has to be fixed in a special way, which is the submission of your own will and my own will to the will of God. And it's important for us to be mindful of this as we go through the day and go through every day that we have the choice to either follow things that are pleasing to God, or we have the ability to say, no, I'm going to do whatever I want. And usually when we do whatever we want, especially when it is intentionally apart from what God would like us to do, we suffer, our friends suffer, our loved ones suffer, the world suffers, even our pets suffer when we do those kinds of things. So why would God let that happen? Because God doesn't want robots. God wants authentic, genuine, strong, intelligent human beings to say, yes, I love God, and I want to serve God, and I want to do everything that is well-pleasing to God. I want to love him with my heart, mind, soul, and strength. I want to love my neighbor as myself. I want to do the things that make God happy. I want to bear the fruit that God hopes that I would bear with the talent that I've been given. All of these things are also up to us to decide whether to use for good or use for selfish or perverted reasons. All of these things are up to us. That's what makes us so much greater than the angels. That we, as God's created being and really the crown and pinnacle of his creation, have the ability to reject him, have the ability to walk away. The ability to make ourselves into our gods or some other stupid thing into our gods. So that's something that we need to understand. When something bad happens, it's not that God has designed for us to suffer. But I will say that suffering is part of who we are. How can you say such a thing, Father? Well, I'll tell you. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, having determined that bearing the image of God within himself, that being like God was not something that we could handle. And so he emptied himself when he came to earth, taking on the form of a servant, a lowly servant, one whose parents couldn't even give a calf for his consecration when he was presented to the temple, but could only give two turtle doves. A poor man, a son of a carpenter. This man came and taught us and gave us words of eternal life. And when the right time came, having fulfilled everything that he needed to teach us, he died for us 
on the cross, in humiliation, completely abandoned by his friends. Look, if you don't understand suffering, just look at him and understand that if we suffer, know that he suffered before us. He gave us the way. And yes, sometimes that way is the way of the cross. This is our challenge. And this is what we have to endure and have to learn how to overcome if we want to find peace. The peace of Christ comes through our uh, joining our wills or making our wills harmonize with the will of God. How do we know such things? Well, we come to church and we learn and we pray and we read the Bible and we read from other Christians who have gone through the ages like St. Gregory the Theologian or St. Gregory Palamas or Alexander Schmemann or St. Maria Skupsova or St. Sophroni. I mean, these people can help guide us along the way that we're supposed to go. But saying that it is God's fault because of something that goes wrong in our lives or some form of suffering that's inflicted in our world is completely unfair and inaccurate. And instead, what we need to do is find the way in our own lives and in our own way to adjoin ourselves, to bring ourselves together with each other, one another, so that we can bear each other's burdens, but also with the God who loves us more than we understand and more that we have the capacity to understand. So I hope you find this helpful. And I hope that this gives an idea of the perspective of who we are as human beings in relationship to God. God does not will horrible things to happen to us, but they do happen because of the fractured and corrupted world in which we live. And we need to be at peace with who we are in relationship to God. And when we are, we can endure all things that may come to us, whatever the world may throw. I pray that God will bless you and your family today and always. I pray that you'll have a great day and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow.